Well, good morning and welcome to Wake Up in the Word. Thank you for joining me this morning. We're in day three of a countdown to his coming as we're checking out some of those signals that show us that we're in that last generation before Jesus returns. Come and join me today as we're in the, we start each one of these with one of the signals that starts with the C, which one we're going to talk about each day. Today, we're going to talk about the churches. What's the church supposed to look like before Jesus comes? Well, there's some distinct indicators, and to me, it's a little bit like a book I had to read in high school. Some of you might remember A Tale of Two Cities by Charles Dickens. Well, the end times, it's a tale of two churches, two churches that are at polar opposites that exist at the same time, just before Jesus returns. One is a church of apostasy, one that's falling apart, people are leaving it, while at the other end, there's a church in revival, where people are being swept into the kingdom, and the fire of God seems to be, seems to have free reign to just move mountains. So as we look at those two contrasts, it's, it's quite interesting, and I'll be reading to you today from 2 Timothy chapter 3 about these days in which we live. But first, let me just say what a great time we had yesterday. So we were down at the South Carolina Baptist Convention in an invitation-only luncheon for some of us with Will Mancini. I'm really looking forward to a book he has coming out later this year entitled Future Church. The whole idea is, what is our church going to look like here in the future, especially post-COVID? So what is that going to mean for the church? What kind of changes are coming if we're going to survive? And I can't wait to see the book. We had a great time of interaction with him yesterday, and I want to say thank you especially not only to our uh, folks at the South Carolina Baptist Convention, Gary Hollingsworth, but our director of missions, George Bullard, who uh, helped us get uh, all of this together and spend some time with Will yesterday. Just I got to thinking when we finished, it isn't so much about the future church in my mind as the church right now. What does the church look like in the world? Well, we already have these two polar opposites, these two extremes being demonstrated on every side. We have a church that is apostate, while we have a church that's in revival, on fire. We have a church that is comfortably dying, while another church is persecuted, yet thriving. We have a church from which millions are leaving, another into which millions are coming. When it comes to the world, we have an apostate church that looks just like the world, with all its poison, its problems, and issues. Then we have another church that stands in direct opposition to the world, swimming against the flow, so to speak. We have finally a church that's apostate, that's forsaking faith, while another church seems to have a faith that can move mountains. So these are the two polar opposites we experience in the last days. And uh, it was Paul who told us, writing to the church at Thessalonica, that don't expect these in times to come unless there's a falling away, an apostasy first. Then Joel is telling us about the end days in which God's going to pour out his spirit on all people, and whoever calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. So both of those things are happening at the same time as we're getting ready for the second coming of Jesus. Well, now as a warning about that apostate church, it is Paul who's writing to the young preacher Timothy in 2 Timothy chapter 3, and he gives us some advice that will be good to take hold of in these days. He said, but know this, difficult times will come in the last days, for people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers, without self-control, brutal, without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of godliness but denying its power. Avoid these people. Strong words, and as you listen to them, I know you couldn't help but think about what we see as we look out our window today, a society that looks like just what Paul described to Timothy. 
what's so scary is much of that society is in what we call churches today as well. It isn't something that's just outside in the world, in the people that you see causing trouble around the world. Instead, it's something that seems to have crept into the church itself. Well, as you look at those statements, I could you know, literally stop and preach a message on almost every one of those words and keep you here for a couple of hours, but recognize that there's something we need to be doing in these days, avoiding the apostate church, making sure we don't fall into apostasy ourselves, and finding a church that is on fire to be a part of. You may discover that may, may even be difficult, almost impossible, depending on where you live. I would say this, if you're in a church that hasn't completely gone off the cliff into apostasy, try to set the fires in the church. Try to point them to Jesus and allow the people around you to experience the glorious blessing of the Spirit-filled life in these last days. And if you can't do that, be involved with the church, even if you have to do it online, that may be far away from you, but that is pointing you to Jesus in these last days, helping you to grow spiritually, and calling you to a walk of holiness and righteousness where you can have an impact in the lives of other people. The apostate church is one that's going to be with us, and what we see in many cases are people walking away from Christianity because of their relationship to an apostate church. Now, there are people all over the internet there's, there are some that even have, uh, the only, there's even a YouTube channel called The Apostasy Report. Oh, oh, listen, friends, watch out for some of the folks that like to report on apostasy because what you tend to have there, sometimes they get it right, sometimes they get it wrong. For some of them, they have such a narrow band as to what represents true Christianity to them that everybody else must just be an apostate and they will make an apostate out of some people that are having the greatest impact in the world today for Christ. So be careful who you listen to, but yes, there's a lot of it going on, and much of it is taking place in the church. We've become infected with greed, with showmanship. We've become lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. So friends, it's a day in which we need to be careful. And as Paul suggested to Timothy, when you find these people who can't seem to live in accordance with God's will and they're living in this uh, world in which all these things have become fashionable to them, it becomes fashionable to become unloving and irreconcilable to say, I'll never forgive them, to slander others, lie about people, to not even have self-control, to be brutal, not even to be able to love what is good. It's almost like if something good's going on, they hate it you run into these people, it doesn't mean you can't take the opportunity to witness to them or share the gospel with them. But look, he said, when you constantly see these people, recognize you can share the gospel with them, yes, but you don't need to hang around with them, lest their poison, their sin rubs off on you. That's why he says, avoid these people. It's a good word of advice for us today as we wake up in the word as we challenge you to hold on to what is good, to set a fire in your church, and to expect great things to happen as the Holy Spirit sweeps millions into the body of Christ before Jesus comes. God bless you. We'll do this again tomorrow as we wake up in the Word.